What's up, ladies and gentlemen? <sighs> Quarter to midnight. My goal is to post a video every day. And I had a long, long work day. So, yeah. I was planning on doing one when I got home. I'm home now. So, we're going to stick to this. I was trying to think, what do I want to go ahead and talk about? And there's a bunch of different things I'd like to. But due to time tonight, I think we're going to touch on something that I'm seeing a lot at work. I work retail. And basically wanted to encourage people. I heard, a, I think his name's a, a Dustin with a Smarter Every Day or Dustin. Um, and uh, I heard this phrase from him. He got it from, he said from someone else. But um, it's the phrase, the idea of giving each other political grace and uh, having that with one another, especially with everything going on right now. I think that uh, this time within our country, within our nation, more than uh, ever before, potentially, at least during any of our lifetimes, um, to be able to go ahead and have political grace um, and and to really show people, hey, you know, like, it's hard to disagree. Like, I disagree on quite a few things with other people, with other friends or family members. But that doesn't mean I choose to uh, intentionally disrespect them or, or try to make them feel unloved or something. Um, just because we don't see eye to eye on, on things. Um, I think it's really important to be able to um, have discussions or um, even just to be able to disagree and not have to make a big argument about it and being able to be like, you know what, it's all right. We, we just don't see eye to eye at this time. Um, and if you give people enough time to talk things through, I think a lot of the time we find that we're a lot closer, um, at least in our intentions. Um, we just have uh, different perspectives or opinions on how to get to the end result um and i think we see that a lot throughout our country i think uh with um all the craziness going on uh, between this year i mean just everything from the covid stuff to um uh the uh peaceful protesting versus the rioting versus um you know what do we do about police reform and i think it's it's a lot going on and yeah i've got my opinion just like you do but um at the end of the day uh which I might share some of that down the road. I'm pretty uh, straightforward with a lot of stuff, but I think uh, I'm conservative. I'm a Christian. Um, like, I, I don't have uh, any crazy, amazing insights to anything, you know. I just simply, you know, tell things as I see it and um, from what I think and try to understand where other people are coming from. And even if I still disagree or even if something, you know, like some of the stuff that you see on the media, um, yeah, it's upsetting. It's frustrating to see both sides what they think or what they say or how they try to twist things for views or um whatever it is you know like it, it's a, upsetting to an extent because i feel like if you just take the time to get to really give each other the benefit of the doubt benefit of the doubt so like the political grace aspect you find that a lot of us are really close um and once again i think uh, a lot of us have the good intentions with everything um, we just have very different perspectives maybe on how to get to the end result um, once again. So anyways, just want to encourage people to go ahead and uh, try to go ahead and exercise that each day. Um, give you a good example. I'd read in a book one time. I think, I think it was How to Win Friends and Influence People, but I'm not 100% sure. Might have been Seven Highly, highly Effective Habits. I'm not sure. By Stephen Covey too. So it's Dale Carnegie or Stephen Covey, someone like that. A lot of amazing people out there who written written some incredible books on a, whether it's personal development, relationships, uh, whatever. But I want to say um, it's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And uh, there was an example, and basically there was this uh, gentleman sitting on a, like a subway. And uh, he had, I think it's four kids with him, three or four kids. And um, they were jumping around being a little antsy with people and, uh, you know, bothering people that were around on the, on the subway. And the dad just wasn't doing anything about it. He was just, you know, letting him do it. And he was sort of in a daze, just not paying attention. So um, this gentleman, he was sitting next to him, and he went ahead and asked him. He said, hey, you know, like, finally, because he said that he's a, tries not to involve with a lot of stuff. But he was, like, got to the point he could see everyone else getting really frustrated with this dad. And uh, he finally, you know, politely says, hey, you know, points out that the children are jumping around and bothering people. Um, and uh, respectfully uh, does that. And the father he tells him, oh, yes, I need to take care of that. Sorry. Um, we were just coming back from the hospital, been in the hospital the last three days, and explained that their mom, his wife, had just um, 
became ill all of a sudden and uh, and died. So uh, the man who was sitting next to him, he said that he said that uh, the change in his own heart inside his emotion, just that little bit of information, that little bit um, of new information for him radically changed the way he felt. Instead of feeling a little frustrated with this guy for letting his children act this way, all of a sudden he was overcome with remorse for him and said, offering to, hey, is there anything that he and his wife could do to help his family, to help them out um, through all of this um, change? And, and, and that kind of idea, um, I've encouraged a lot of people I've trained over the years to work to to follow that aspect of, of saying hey you know like on day one you have to decide you're going to forgive you're going to have people come in and treat you like crap they're going to go ahead and do things that they shouldn't do they're going to say things they shouldn't say to you they're going to accuse you of all, all kinds of stuff i've had people tell me ridiculous stuff um you know when they get emotional and upset yell at me part of the kkk like stuff's absolutely awful awful insults um you know and this is going years back thankfully i haven't had um, many of those in the last couple of years, but you know, it definitely has happened throughout throughout my somewhat short career um, so far. But um, a little over ten years total. But that being said, um, I always tell people you got to make up your mind on day one to go ahead and choose that you're going to forgive everyone. Now that doesn't mean that um, everything's going to be fine, roses and happy. It just means that when they do treat you bad, you've already made up your mind that you're not going to react emotionally to it, but you're going to respond. Uh, and you're going to try to respond in the best possible manner. Um, so I always tell people one of the things that helps with that, you one, you make up your mind right away. Um, I'm going to forgive them. You know, ultimately, I'm going to forgive them. doesn't mean that it's right the way they treat you. I'm not condoning it. I'm simply saying I'm choosing to forgive them in advance. And then I'm going to try to chalk up whatever it is to some crazy scenario, such as what happened here with this gentleman on the subway. You know, like... You know, perhaps they have just gone through something awful. I had one gentleman, he had uh, messed up something at the store and didn't realize it um, with his vehicle. And he called back later and apologized. Um, turned out, and we're thinking, how in the world did this happen? He had driven a long way before he realized uh, <laughs> what he'd done. And um, found out that he'd had been diagnosed with terminal cancer the night before. He found out the results from uh, some tests. So things like that, like he apologized and said there's no excuse and he made it right but that being said it's just understanding that when people have stuff happen life happens sometimes no a lot of the time i'm sure it's just not excusable sometimes people are just mean people but i'd rather go through life treating people the best i can um and that way when i do screw up and i, I fall short um, hopefully that is more of the exception than the rule and that I can go throughout each day focusing on reflecting Christ's love um, back towards others and, and adding value to them um, you know once again I'm very very resolute in what I believe you know I'm a Bible believing Christian so I have very set opinions well I mean beliefs because that's what scripture says on a lot of stuff but I also tell people, here's the deal. It's not my call to be the the judge on uh, if you're an acquaintance, you know, or, or if, you know, someone who's not like a super close friend. It's not my place to necessarily pull you aside and you know let you have it or whatever it is. Um, I, I'm fine with rebuking close friends and family and stuff if I feel the time is right. And um, trying to do it in the manner that is loving and encouraging and positive. Um, but. I'd rather err on the softer side um, to really reinforce the fact that, hey, I'm not here to try to say I'm better than you or that you're so awful. Um, I'm here to say that God loves you, that I love you no matter what. Uh, and while I don't necessarily agree with some decisions you might be making or have made um, or considering making, that doesn't change whether or not I'm going to love you. You know, people like to ask me that a lot about my children when they grow up. You know, what if they grow up and, and they decide to uh, engage in homosexuality, for example? I don't know why this is a regular question. Um, and I always tell everyone, here's the deal. I don't know until I'm in that situation, obviously. But I've, you know, because people ask, I've thought about it. And 
I mean, the immediate reaction is looking at it and saying, my immediate response every time is, doesn't change my love for them at all. Just because they struggle with something that I don't struggle with or and never have, you know, like, it doesn't change the fact that I still love them with all of my heart. They're my own flesh and blood. They are my children, and uh, I will always love them. That being said, um, you know, we all do have to answer to our Creator one day, and I hope and pray that they make the decision to turn to Christ um, for their salvation, and uh, you know, that's only a decision they can make. I can do my best as a parent to raise them and teach them right versus wrong and, and, and uh, help them learn about um, the Bible and understand it, but I cannot make that decision for them cannot pressure them into making that decision. It is a decision um, to, to choose to accept free gift of salvation through, through Jesus Christ is literally something they have to decide on their own. And I hope and pray that is their decision one day. Uh, they might make it, they might not. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing, you know, I believe in life, but that's up to them. And, uh, you know, I continue to do what I can as a father to be able to raise them towards, uh, towards the idea of of adding value to others and uh, really having gratitude and appreciating what it is that we have been blessed with and not focusing so much on what we don't have. I mean, things, it's cool to have goals and to work towards things. I definitely can relate to that and I'm very grateful to have been able to do that with certain things. But um, at the end of the day, being able to understand the difference between uh, you know being content um, and, and recognizing having that gratitude is huge. So I've gone off on a long rabbit trail, several of them. Coming back to this idea of political grace to end it up is, is a lot of this stuff is all encompassing, so it, it touches each other. Um, in my humble opinion, that's just the way I see it. And it's hard to talk about one thing without connecting it to another. Um, but I really do believe that if you go out, um, um, I think it was Zig Ziglar talked about this when he said, if you go out looking for friends, you'll find that they're scarce. If you go out in the world looking for friends, you'll find that they're scarce. But if you go out seeking to be a friend, you'll find that they're plentiful. And uh, I, uh, very, very lucky with that. And I'm always told every day that uh, by customers, people I haven't met, that uh, my attitude is something they really appreciate. And uh, they're always asking, like, are you always like this? You know, the first time that they meet me, I tell them what? try my best you know and i'm very grateful i think gratitude makes a big difference so um hope everyone's doing all right uh sorry if i rambled a lot but um these are just my thoughts today i wanted to share them with you stick to the plan and um if you haven't done a uh, gratitude journal before i highly recommend that um, simply put every day for bed or in the morning when you wake up some point throughout the day whenever lunch break go ahead and start writing down a few things, maybe like five things a day, for example, and uh, five things that you're thankful for, that you're grateful for, you know. It's easy to do, you know, um, it really is. And uh, I can give you five right off the top of my head. First, I'm, as a Christian especially, I'm grateful for Christ, and that is a no-brainer for me. Um, I'm grateful, and to follow that idea, I'm grateful for having a job, for example, especially through all of this stuff that's happened. Um, I have not... Um, had to suffer um, financially through all of that um, a whole lot. Um, one of my uh, businesses has, but um, that's fine. It'll all work out in the end. But I've had a job. My primary job has been great through all of it. And then uh, a third, let's see, I'm grateful for having a fan for when the air conditioning's not hitting this part of the house as well. I can have a fan. It has a little air circulation. It's great. I'm grateful for the electricity. Like, you can go right down all this stuff. I'm grateful for having um, the freedom um, the freedoms that we have here in the United States, you know, like being able to have um, freedom of speech. I'm grateful for the people who are out there peacefully protesting, trying to raise awareness about something that is an issue in our country with, uh, with uh, having some uh, rough edges with law enforcement. You know, like we don't have, we're never going to have a perfect, perfect group of law enforcement officers because they're made up of people. Just like we as a nation will never be perfect. We, we have flaws. You'll never find the perfect church, right? Um, if you do, don't go, right? That's the saying, because then it won't be perfect anymore. Um, we can't be aiming for perfection. We can constantly be aiming to uh, improve. And, uh, you know, I think uh, 
brought up a lot of interesting points. And I think hopefully more people are starting to understand, um, especially with what's been going on in Chaz slash Chop, it's understanding that, uh, you know, you do need police. And I'm very grateful for our law enforcement officers. And I think 99.99% .99 of them are great, wonderful people, most likely. Just out there wanting to serve and do the best. But you always have those few bad apples and they're gonna go ahead and have a big reflection on everyone else. And then you also have um, the main issue I I really believe is I believe they're not funded enough and I think they need a lot more training. And I like what Jocko Willink um, had talked about with uh, the idea of 20% of their time ought to go into training every week. Um, and, and that way they're, they're getting to keep their skills, getting them sharp, constantly sharpening them and then keeping them honed in really nice. So, okay. We are already closing in on 16 minutes because I can talk about this stuff. It's a passion of mine. I really enjoy it. I will be coming back probably. I might be doing my EDC bag tomorrow. We'll see. But other than that, I'm going to go ahead and roll. Catch you later. Have a good night.